Hey everyone, welcome back to Miniature Painting 101, a series of videos where we teach you all about painting miniatures from start to finish and everything in between, including camouflage. And this is part 129, we're almost in the 130s, camouflage. Now today I'll be showing you a simple two-color camouflage scheme for tanks. So we'll be using this main blade. Now I'll only be painting about the front quarter of it, uh, the front left quarter, because it's such a large vehicle. I'm, I'm going to use multiple color schemes on this at, over the next few weeks, just to show you a couple different types of camouflage. So we'll start off with a simple two-tone color scheme. So we're going to use browns and greens. This is the most reflective of the Astro Militarum or simple army color scheme. So we'll start off with some Bane Blade Brown, which is a nice mid-tone brown from the Citadel range. And uh, I thinned it down to some Lamia Medium. That way it's nice and thin. And of course, I start off by creating my wavy lines. Now you can decide how big your wavy lines are going to be and make them uh, basically proportional to the tank. The bigger the tank, the bigger the lines you can be. So this one, as you can see, they're going to be pretty large wavy lines. And what I like to do is I like to start on a single surface of the tank and then bend it all the way around and continue it on accordingly. So you can actually end you can end waves if you want, make them you know circular in the end and have a nice end to, to them. But or you can continue them along the entire surface until they hit an edge, and then you can end them there. But as you see, I like to bend them. So you start off with one surface and then keep going with the wavy lines for the camouflage until you want to end them essentially. But make sure to bend them along each surface accordingly. And then that way it's one continuous line and it doesn't end up being choppy in the end. You want your your lines to be nice and smooth and bendy and um, just continuous around the vehicle. And if you find your edges to be too sharp, we can fix that later. But you really want nice, smooth, round uh, bends to them, like waves, basically. So now I'm going to take my Bane Blade Brown and just fill them in. As I said, I thinned those in Lamia Medium. That way it goes nice and thin, doesn't obscure any details, doesn't go too clumpy. And I'm just going to fill in all the sections that I just masked out. And as you see, we're already forming our pattern quite nicely. I should mention that I did prime it gray. Uh, you can also pre-shade it with some black if you wish. Um, I typically would paint this over a gray, um, a gray primer, since you have two colors that work well with grays versus a white where you'd have to make sure it's really nice and, and solid coverage. So as you see, you're just going with my Bane Blade Brown around the vehicle, filling it all in, making sure that it's nice and continuous around the vehicle. So this is very much the that Astra Militarum Army Imperial Guard color. And you see, and the key is also use a brush appropriate to the size of the vehicle. As you see, I'm using a pretty large size brush because I can get away with it. And also I tried to to keep strokes in a relatively consistent direction, which if you do show brush strokes, I have a way of mask of kind of hiding them in, in just an, an, um, a moment. So here's what it looks like after a single uh, a single color. But as you can see, I just kind of ended it halfway, uh, about the front quarter, front left quarter of the Bane Blade. And that's the reason, as I said, I'm gonna do multiple coats or multiple different color schemes over the next few weeks. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a one-to-one -one mix of Bane Blade Brown or Anushapti Bone. So it's a little bit lighter. And we're gonna do a very light dry brushing along this brown, the brown surfaces that we just painted. Now the reason for this is first of all, uh, this will create a bit of a texture to the paint job. And what I intentionally wanna do with this texture is A, it gives some reality to the tank. What it also does is it, is it kinda of masks um, and fixes if you accidentally left some brush strokes in there. The dry brushing will kind of hide that in a sense and make it look more realistic while uh, kind of fixing that, the brush strokes if you made that mistake. Plus it'll add another tone. So as you can see, it'll, it'll interact with, so there'll be some darker tones of the browns. And if you focus more centrally with your dry brushing, you'll get um, just a lighter tone of this lighter brown uh, along the central parts of each stripe as well as the raised surfaces. So the, the divots and the edges will look really nice. It just makes these areas really pop. Uh, well, I need a little bit of contrast. So it's not just a, a dull brown coat. It'll have a, a bit of, uh, of pop to it. And when that's completely done, it's time to go to the greens. So I'm gonna use Caliban Green. I'm gonna thin it down as well. This is from uh, Citadel. And I'm gonna use some Lamy Medium once again. And first of all, I'm gonna start once again by just nice and cleaning uh, up those, those bends and um, 
just creating my outline of the green areas. And as I said, this step is to clean up the lines as well, the brown. So if, if I found it too sharp or not bendy enough, or just, uh, I just really wanna clean it up. And that's why you always start with the, the lighter tone and then go with the darker tone afterwards because the darker tone can be used to clean up the lighter tone. And so now I'm just gonna map, as I said, just cleaning up the, the brown lines, creating the outlines, and then I'm gonna fill them in once again with Caliban Green. Making sure once again that they bend accordingly and correctly and are connected. And then I'll just take my Caliban Green with a large brush once again and just fill them in accordingly. Now I did do two coats of this Caliban Green because it's very thin. It's a thin paint to begin with and adding some Lamy Medium made it thinner. So I did two coats of it. As you can see, it just comes on very thinly. And you can leave it after one coat. I just wanted to have two solid coats. So it's a really, really dark, you know, army green tone to it. As you can see now, now that we're starting with the greens, the camo pattern is really starting to come to life. This is one of those jobs that if you have an airbrush, it might be worth it because it's such a large vehicle, but obviously you can take this and apply it to any camouflage pattern on any vehicle with a hand brush as well. So right now I'm just gonna quickly paint in all the green, making sure to get a nice solid coat, and then I'll do a second coat just to make sure it's nice and clean. And once again, I'm cleaning up the, the browns as we go along as well. That's essentially it for the camo pattern. Um, we will, of course, do another green highlight after the solid green, and then um, I have another tip for making the, the pattern really stand out and pop, but uh, it'll be optional. But as I said, now we're gonna do the front just a, a, about a quarter of this main blade because it's so large, I might as well take advantage of that and do a few co cool schemes on it and show you some contrast of the uh, some camo patterns in future videos. So now, that the solid, that we got a solid green coat. I did two coats of it. We're gonna repeat what we did in the previous brown step. And we're going to do, create a lighter green and do a very light dry brush over the green areas just to make these areas really stand, like, some tones to it. Again, add some realism and some texture in case you wanna mask a little bit of your, uh, or hide some of your brush strokes. So I added some Warpstone Glow. So it's about a two to one mix of Caliban Green and Warpstone Glow and I repeated just a light dry brush over these surfaces. So as you can see, it does bring some of the raised parts really to life and really make them a little bit brighter, but it just adds another tone to the green. So now we have a couple mixed green tones, a couple mixed brown tones, and it just it adds some variation to your model and, and creates a really nice camo pattern. Again, not that many paints are used in this step, so it, it's still a, really t a relatively simple effect to accomplish. And just do a light dry brush. Now, obviously, when, when doing your dry brush, be very careful. Focus on the central parts of the pattern. That way, you don't accidentally, you know, dry brush onto the brown areas. But it just adds some texture and makes the uh, edges really pop. So now we're basically done. So if you want to end here, you're good to go with your camo pattern. As you can see, you can continue this along the entire vehicle. And that, that's basically what I would have done, is just continue along the entire vehicle instead of editing it by about a quarter of the vehicle and wrapping along the entire vehicle itself. But uh, here's a step that if you really wanna make your camel pattern really just add a little pop to it. What I like to do is then take a darker color. So what I'm gonna do is take some Abaddon Black and mix it with Caliban Green, so it's a very, very dark green. Next, I'm gonna thin it down with some Lamy Medium pretty heavily, and then I'm gonna take a nice fine detail brush and I'm going to carefully uh, trace out the exact edges of the green pattern. And what this will do is it'll just add a little bit more cleanup stage to the brown, so make it nice and curvy and wavy so that they're not very sharp. And what it really does is it adds just an extra layer of almost shadowing and just a dark outline between the two colors. And it really makes the pattern really just pop out at you because now we have a very very strong contrast separating the browns and the greens and it just adds a little bit as I said, more pop and it just it really adds to the pattern it takes a few minutes because you have to carefully you know go around and trace out the pattern but you can use it as a cleanup step as I said and that it helps you get some really nice curvy lines and uh, and then also just as, I said, as you can see now it's just really bringing the pattern to life on uh, on the tank 
And here's what the model looks like when I'm completely done and then completely traced out on it. As you can see, it just brings the pattern a little more to life. And that's how to do a simple two-tone green and brown camo scheme on a tank. It didn't take a lot of time. Uh, use a large brush, as large as allow you, wrap your patterns around the vehicle, make it consistent and smooth and you're in good shape. So as always, thank you so much for watching this episode of Miniature Painting 101. I really hope you enjoyed it. Stay tuned for next week's episode, part 130, which is just around the corner. But if you don't want to wait for next week, check out The Warp. Click on the link below for a free 14-day trial to my premium YouTube channel. We're not only going to see the next six months worth of Miniature Painting 101 episodes for anyone else. You'll get to see over 100 start to finish painting tutorials, battle reports, face-off episodes, an Airbrush 101 series, a Q&J series, just tons of content. I know you'll love it. So go check out The Warp. Until next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting, everyone.